The second episode of the SpaceX series will be dedicated in its entirety to explaining all the vehicles SpaceX has made in the past as well as all the ships SpaceX plans to make in the future. So there will be a lot of me talking in this video. Hope you guys are okay with it. Here's the complete list of things I'm gonna mention today. They're all critical parts of the SpaceX journey. There are, of course, the Falcon vehicles. Falcon 1, Falcon 9, and Falcon Heavy. All of them are equipped with the Merlin engine, Falcon 1 comes with a Castro thruster, and in Falcon 9 it was replaced by a Merlin engine. There are also the future Mars Colonial Transporter, which will be equipped with the Raptor engine. Both the engine and the vehicle are in their development phase. I will talk about this in the future video. Other than this, there is also the Dragon Capsule, which is the landing spacecraft that transports cargoes to the International Space Station. The version 2 of Dragon will be an upgrade that transports both cargo and human crew to the Earth orbit and potentially Mars. Firstly, let's start with the engines, since they are arguably the most crucial part of every Falcon vehicle. Merlin engine is truly the single leading agent in all of SpaceX engines. Among all of the engines designed in various generations, Merlin is the most used. In Falcon 1, one Merlin engine was used in the rocket first stage. In Falcon 9, there are nine Merlin engines equipped in the first stage. One Merlin engine equipped for its second stage. First stage is the booster part of Falcon that sends the vehicle to the space. Second stage is the part that follows which works better in vacuum. Merlin uses RP-1 and liquid oxygen as a propellant, and it has a thrust that is able to lift a stack of 40 cars vertically to the sky. For the purpose of having a bit more perspective, Falcon 9 has 9 Merlin engines, and Falcon Heavy has 27 Merlin engines, which can vertically lift a thousand cars at once. Then following the chronological order of creation is the Castro engine. A single Castro engine is used in the second stage of Falcon 1. Mind you, Falcon 1 has flown in total only five times. The last two times are successful, which means that the Castro engine is used only two times successfully. It was later replaced by the Merlin engine in Falcon 9. It has the thrust equivalent to merely 3.3% of the latest Merlin engine. The next engine created by SpaceX is the Draco engine. This is an entirely different family of engines compared to the Merlins. Merlin engines are kerosene-based engine, while the Draco line is hypergolic engine. Hypergolic engine uses a different type of propellant, hence the different name. More about Draco, it is equipped in the Dragon capsule to provide extra altitude control. Draco's much bigger version Super Draco is 200 times the size of Draco and its primary purpose is for SpaceX launch abort system. Although it is meant for propulsive landing, in just last month, Elon has announced that the Draco 2 capsule will no longer propulsively land. More about this later. Now that we know what are the engines used in various Falcon vehicles, we can finally move on to the vehicles themselves. Firstly, the Falcon 1. It was the first ever rocket built by SpaceX. It was designed and manufactured in-house, built from ground up. In total, Falcon 1 vehicles have flown five times, and the first three times failed. Eventually in 2009, it was replaced by the Falcon 9. Furthermore, although both Falcon 1 and the Falcon 9 uses the Merlin engines, their thrust level is vastly different. Falcon 1's Merlin engine is around half the thrust generated by Merlin engines in Falcon 9. Falcon 1 is able to bring a payload of 180 kilograms to the lower Earth orbit, as demonstrated. The theoretical level is higher. Then is Falcon 9. Three major iterations of Falcon 9 have been developed so far. The Falcon 9 version 1.0, Falcon 9 version 1.1, as well as the Falcon 9 full thrust. Each future version is an upgrade from its predecessors. Upgrades include engine powers and its arrangements, payload as well as the major cost-saving factor which is its reusability. The reusability improved from no attempt to landing of the version 1.0 to 100% success rate of the landing in the case of Falcon 9 full thrust. Furthermore, the major evaluation of launch capability is the weight of the payload that could be sent to the orbit. Two most frequently mentioned orbits are firstly the lower earth orbit and secondly the geostationary transfer orbit. The LEO is no more than 2,000 kilometers from the sea level while the GTO geostationary transfer orbit is exactly 35,786 kilometers from the sea level. The International Space Station, for example, is flying over our head at 400 kilometers from the sea level. Hence, 
it is much harder to send a satellite to the geostationary transfer orbit than to the lower Earth orbit. Therefore, the maximum payload capacity to different orbits are different. For the latest version of Falcon 9, the Falcon 9 full thrust, its capacity for payload to lower Earth orbit is 22,800 kg, while its payload to geostationary transfer orbit is around 8,300 kg for the expandable rockets and 5,500 kg for the reusable rockets. Falcon Heavy is not active yet. The first launch is expected end of this year, so I will not touch too much on this vehicle. What we do know is that it will be equipped with the latest version of Merlin engines and it will have 27 of those. So it's pretty powerful. Next, we talk about the Dragon spacecrafts that deliver cargo to the International Space Station. It has a dry mass of 4,200 kg and has a maximum payload of 6,000 kg to the International Space Station and a maximum return payload of 3,500 kg. Its successor, Dragon 2, is in its development phase and claims to have propulsive landing capability. However, just in the last month, SpaceX aborted the plan for propulsive landing, claiming that it's too hard to justify the safety for the extended landing legs. Elon has in many occasions made fun of the old-fashioned parachute landing, but it looks like the SpaceX is going to stick with that too. Admittedly, Safety always comes first, especially with human astronauts involved. However, this has called for questions as to how the Mars landing could be carried out since the atmosphere on Mars is so thin that the parachute landing is simply not possible. To that question, Elon responded with, I'm pretty confident that propulsive landing is not the right way, and there is a far better approach. So all we can do is to wait for the updated architecture for Elon Musk in September. Alright, that's all I want to talk about in today's episode. The future vehicles like the Mars Colonial Transporter will be discussed in the future videos. Hope you guys find this video helpful. Again, I'm Lei. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen.